it's that time again, that time when we step into the virtual bar and meet up with the denizens therein. Pull up a chair with us. Your hosts, Chris, Greg, and Ken. This is three pastors walking to a bar. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And we have the peacemaker here with us today, don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. The ultimate peacemaker. Yes. Yeah. We're going to introduce our guests here in just a second and, uh, and, and share a little bit about them. You know, according to the National Sheriff's Association, there are 3,081 sheriffs across the nation. Generally speaking, a sheriff is, is, is known to be the highest, usually elected law enforcement officer of a county. Um, and that might be a conversation we have later is the whole push by the county commissioners to have a, a, a chosen sheriff instead of an elected one. Mm -hmm. That'll be an interesting yes. conversation. Um, in any case, uh, the office of sheriff is a statutory constitutional office having exclusive powers and authority under state law or, and or state constitution. So um, today we are privileged to have uh, our county sheriff, Kootenai County Sheriff, Robert Bob Norris with us today. Sheriff, thank you so much yes. for being with us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. The first most intense question we have, are you related to Chuck? Absolutely not. Ah, oh, oh, darn. <laughs> we wanted to meet him. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, were, we were super excited. We were like, man, we're finally going to meet Walker, yeah. Texas Ranger. <laughs> yep. But no, that's not going to happen, huh? I get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, another one I get a lot is... Uh, the Medal of Valor winner times two, Tommy Norris. Oh, uh -oh. Man, yeah. Who lives up here in the Hayden Lake area. No, no relation. No relation to. Mm. Mm. I think I would claim Chuck Norris yeah, anyways yeah. if I were you. You know what? Yeah. One of the two. Both of them are pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pretty badass. I think, yeah. <laughs> both I think, of them are. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm related to both of those somehow. <laughs> <laughs> somehow. Adam, <laughs> Noah. <laughs> So you were unanimously appointed as county sheriff by the Board of Commissioners on January 1st, 2021, correct? That's correct, for a 10-day term. For a 10-day term. And then shortly after that, you were voted in by the people of Kootenai County, uh, elected county sheriff. That's correct. That's correct. So that was my rookie 10-day tenure. Now, <laughs> yeah. I, now I consider myself a veteran. <laughs> Two-term. <laughs> Two-term, exactly. That was the, that was the tutorial, the 10-day tutorial <laughs> for, right. for county sheriff. That's yeah? correct. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, where do you come from? What brought you here? Like, how, how did you end up in Kootenai County, of all places? Well, my law enforcement comes from a small county south of Boise. It's called Los Angeles, <laughs> California. Mm, yeah. So my law enforcement comes from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office, my law enforcement experience anyway. And did a 30-year career in Los Angeles. About 2005, I came up here in this Spokane area, came over to Coeur d'Alene for a couple of days. And I got to tell you, as soon as I'm going eastbound on 90, there was a little bit of a feeling. And, yeah, uh, that mm -hmm. feeling of uh, a freedom and feeling of uh, this is where I need to be. Yeah, and uh, it was certainly a calling, and started to look to purchase, and uh, ended up buying in 2013, and moved my family up here, and lo and behold, became a member of the search and rescue team. And some people have That's said... That's a great group, by yeah, the way. I think so, too. Yeah. I think they do a great job. Especially yeah, they're mostly volunteer. volunteers, oh, yeah. right? 100%. 100% volunteers. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I um, had some people said, hey, we're starting to have bigger department problems. We'd like somebody with a little bit bigger department experience. Would you consider running? And I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, no way. <laughs> Let me think about it. No. Not no, but really no. And then a few months later, they said, well, would you consider it? I go, No. <laughs> And then uh, after about eight months, I said, are you sure? And I said, okay, let, let's do this. So uh, lo and behold, the primary with originally five candidates, then it uh, we had one drop out, so there was four. Mm -hmm. And I won that by almost 20% wow. margin, and here I am. I'm your sheriff. 
Nice. All right. Nice. Well, we're glad to have you. We yes. really are. We really are. Um, so are you a church going man? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yes, awesome. I absolutely. Live in the light. Absolutely. Amen. 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 We appreciate that. Um, there's a, it's, it's the, it's the majority up here. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and we've got a great community of believers up here and, um, well, you've been put through it just in the very sh- sh- short period of time that you've been here. We're going to, we're going to talk about some of the things that have come along, um, over, over the time. But, um, one of the things that people bring up a lot is that you're an avid supporter of the concealed carry laws. Um, is that, is that true? I am a staunch supporter of the second amendment of the um, second amendment. Yeah. 100%. Um, I have seen what happens to communities that restrict the second amendment Yeah, and they make felons and criminals at a law abiding citizens. And they actually help the, the criminal mm-hmm. that chooses to carry a gun. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not of a, a fan of any type of red flag laws uh, or anything that restricts the Second Amendment. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. and can I tell a quick story? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This uh, I was at the fair, and this uh, lady came up to me and she said, uh, "You know, you're from California, aren't you?" I go, "Yeah, I am." I said, "Well, I was born and raised here, and I hope that you support." some red flag laws because there's just too many guns around here. Wow. And I said, well, um, do you feel pretty safe? And she goes, no, not really. There's just a lot of firearms around here. And uh, she goes, even here at the fair, look around, there's people carrying firearms. I go, yeah, there is. But what about Chicago? Chicago has some of the most restrictive gun laws from a state in a city and they have some of the most violent crime in the United States. Mm -hmm. I think they're the highest rated homicide. And I said, uh, would, do you think you would feel any safer there? She pauses and she goes, well, probably not. I said, no, we live in a very safe community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And part of what secures that safety is that second amendment. So, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a question this morning by one of the fellows downstairs, and uh, I know he he speaks for other people that we've talked to, uh, talking about the incident. I core was it Baltimore or somewhere where the the Black Lives BLM Matter march uh, protesters were kind of uh, protesting in front of this couple's house, and they came out and brandished a couple of firearms, and they were eventually let off of the charges, I believe, but. You know, were drugged through the they courts, were prosecuted and, and heavily, yeah. ruined. So his question is kind of, where, uh, what is the state of the castle uh, doctrine here in Idaho, and what is the prosecutorial climate that we live in? Would that be supported or opposed? Do you think that would be a hundred percent supported? Um, we had a situation in the unincorporated county, Cooney County area. This happened uh, about two years ago, and husband and wife were home. They had recently moved here from Spokane because they wanted to get away from all that bad element over there. Mm -hmm. They were only living here for about two weeks, Mm -hmm. and some guy is trying to break in the front door, and he was armed, and the... Husband had a modern sport or sporting rifle, and he warned the individual to don't come in, get out of here, we don't want anything to do with you. And the gentleman, the suspect broke in. The, the couple felt threatened for their life, and they defended themselves, and they killed the individual. And that was absolutely justified shooting and to give you a little even in my experience in other states such as during the 1992 riots Mm -hmm. do you remember seeing some of the korean store owners on top of top of their rooftops defending their their property and 
there was no prosecution of uh, those individuals at that time in 92 because they were protecting their own property. So, yeah. In a case like that, it'd really be hard, I think, to find a prosecutor willing to put himself out there to say, I'm going to prosecute people for defending their lives and property. I think here yeah. in Idaho, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. But we have things that are going on with some prosecutors that I scratch my head at in other parts of the country and in other yeah, states. Right. And um, Almost like they're after the people. Almost. Yeah. Like they have an oh, agenda. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, modern sporting rifle, huh? Yes. I like that term. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> modern sporting rifle. Modern, modern day sporting rifle. Yeah. I like that term. That's good. It works. It yeah, works. It's a really well, good yeah. And a lot of people believe that AR stands for assault rifle. Yeah. 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 It's so absolutely arm, not true. Armalite, armalite, armalite rifle. Armalite yeah. Rifle, yeah. Yeah. Only a North Idahoan would know that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That seems to be a common thing around here. So, um, uh, gosh, um, where do we even start? There's so much. Like, I think for us, one question that we would really like to know, um, being pastors, and, and we have a large flock here that um, um, are always concerned about how our politics are being influenced by our, our belief structure. And we just did a, uh, an episode on uh, the separation of church and state and how people are utilizing that to kind of get, try and say that you should not be able to use your beliefs in your political decisions um, and how that's absolutely patently false um, in the establishment clause. Um, But being that you're a church going guy and that you are a believer uh, in Jesus Christ, um, how, how does that, do you find that that is a massive influence in the way that you make decisions as far as policy and procedure and things of that nature? Well, I like, there, there's certain things that I base my decision making on, and certainly the Bible is one of them. Mm-hmm. And the U.S. Constitution and the Idaho Constitution and state laws of the state of Idaho. Mm-hmm. And, and also, I'm also governed by what is right, the right thing to do. Right, right. So I believe that when a pastor speaks, I do like for them to stay to the biblical sense of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But I also like them to relate it to our everyday life in 2022. Right. And point out some of the differences that are currently occurring Verses and or what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I think that um, where I go and many pastors here in Kootenai County do that exact strategy. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible. One of the things we talked about was it, it's almost impossible to separate morality from politics since politics is downstream from morality it's like, how do you, how would you, how would you anticipate, or how would you even consider the fact that it's possible for a person to remove their theological beliefs right. from their political make decision making? Right. Yeah, it doesn't it, even make any sense. Right. Yeah. No, uh, you're spot on. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. And we do have quite a few pastors in our area that are outspoken about political things that when it deals with morality, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's obviously a, a line to be drawn, you know, I mean, when that's all that you're talking about and you're talking about the gospel, then you probably crossed a line at some point. Uh, but so it, definitely a balance. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, yeah, for sure. Balance for sure. Um, so you have, uh, what's going on here with this part of the skip, the script, Ken kudos. What, what, is, what are these? Thank yous? What's these going are, on here? <laughs> these are things I, I was just looking at, some of the things that had happened in, in your short tenure so far and some of the, the more visible and news noteworthy things that have, that have happened. And I just felt like we should kind of begin by giving you thanks for some of the things that you've already done in this short period of time. You know, we've met uh, our local deputy, Doug Goodman, and he is just an outstanding officer. Yes, We're very is, proud yeah. to have him yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, he is. keeping an eye on us. Doing Overwatch, just here in our area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really great. In fact, I just backed him up on a traffic stop just uh, on my way over here. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. 
We also uh, <laughs> did you get the? Let me. I want to talk to your boss. <laughs> yeah, he's right here. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm a no. sovereign citizen traveling <laughs> yeah. through the highways. Actually, when I go on scene and they they say, "Hey, aren't you the sheriff?" Um, or are you the guy in charge? I say, no, he's in charge. Yep. Yeah. Um, scene commander. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah. I am a big, big fan of that deputy on the, the street out there in the field. He's the incident commander. Mm-hmm. He's the one mm-hmm. that, that's in charge of that incident. Yeah. Good. Not I love that philosophy yeah. here. Yeah. 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 And that's even expands. I think we were talking to Nick Franson when he was talking about how mm-hmm. they respond to public, uh, to like a, a active mm-hmm. shooter event mm-hmm. and like the first, Deputy on scene is the incident oh, commander until, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's a brilliant. Carry on, Ken. Yeah. Well, like we, uh, Chris said, we uh, interviewed Deputy Nick Franson back in our July 10 episode, and I think we we're able to uh, educate our community a lot that we have a very, uh, very robust active shooter protocol and officer training program going on here that our yeah, state can yeah. be very proud of. And that was, you know, post Uvalde, and everybody was very nervous. And uh, I will assure you that we will not have a strategy like the Uvalde law enforcement had. Um, yeah. Sitting and waiting, standing and waiting, mm. is not part of our protocols. We will arrive on scene, and we will locate. We will respond to the sound of gunfire, and we will neutralize that threat. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Man. That's the Amen. proper way to do it Amen. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it could be one deputy and some guy who says, "Hey, I have an, I, I'm, I got concealed carry. I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's go." Or it could right. be two deputies. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever we find on scene, we're let's, gonna go. Let's with go. It. Yeah. Resources. Yeah, yeah. cool. That's like great. That. Glad to hear it. Um, another thing is. Uh, your support for the safety resource officers in Lakeland Joint School District. Yep. Yeah. That is a unique situation that I was I was ignorant of until we interviewed the superintendent. And we're going to have her back on the program, by the way, here pretty soon. She's dealing with some issues, and she wants to bring some news about that. So, Yeah, Lisa, she's great. Yeah, and, and then the uh, arrests of the Patriot Front guys, that made national news. Boy, it sure did. Yeah, yeah. Just, boy, the 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 death threats and everything that came after uh, that. And was it, it from primarily the Patriot Front supporters that were just calling up and just? Oh, oh no, I got it from both sides. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, no, I got it from both sides. Yeah. I mean, you make the arrest to protect the people that were there, and then the people that support the people that you were protecting are now yelling uh, at you oh, yeah, for it, it was, against uh, you. Yeah. I got a little bit of taste of national politics on mm. that particular event. Did you determine just a, just a smidget. Did you determine you didn't want any more of it? <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> Ugh. Some of these guys that get into national politics, you know, I, I just you have to be a special kind of person to want to get involved with that stuff because it is just nasty, nasty, nasty business. You know, unfortunately with uh, social media, anybody can say anything they want Mm -hmm. on social media without providing any facts to support that statement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we saw that in the sheriff's campaign in 2020 when we had, websites, social media postings of me being arrested and have a criminal background and that I was beating my wife and had all kinds of these allegations. And there's people that once you plant that seed, it's hard to remove that seed. So it's like anybody can say anything on social Mm -hmm. media without any... Facts and unfortunately, we are a nation right now where half of us believe. Oh what yeah, you believe read. anything you see on social media. Right. Yeah, I am now a firm believer. I don't believe anything on social media. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't believe anything <laughs> until <laughs> I take the steps to verify it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't believe anything on social media until I yeah do my own research. Yeah. On we it. we did a we did a, a series uh, when uh, with a lot of our different political guys running for office here, and then we did a. Um, a pre-election kind of ballot review kind of thing. 
and we were talking about Mike Crapo. I mean, Crapo. Crapo. <laughs> Mike Crapo. And they, there was a whole that we did a, just talked about, like, you know, his voting record was very conservative and, you know, that kind of thing. And, man, I had some, some guy email us and tell us that, you know, he doesn't even live in Idaho and he has this kind of different past and he was like all this different stuff. And, you know, it's like you, I said, well, can you give me a list of all the stuff that you have collected to verify all of this? And he's like, all you got to do is Google it. And then that was the end of the conversation, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it it's just – an atmosphere of you just have to believe like you said like everything you see is fake until it's not yeah because it's it's just terrible out there like that that whole thing with the with the patriot front and all that you know i mean does, who knows what was going to go down there yeah, yeah yeah it was uh a lot of conspiracy theories you know mm-hmm. came up after that and but it was mere fate that uh some guy called and said, "Hey, I, yeah, that tip was golden, wasn't <laughs> yeah, it?" He yeah, he was like, "Hey, I don't know what's going on." Well, but that I'm... guy was an FBI plant. You know <laughs> yeah, that, right? yeah that, well, <laughs> not walking his little poodle. And, uh... <laughs> the, the poodle, yeah, the poodle was, was a trained <laughs> <Yeah>. FBI canine. <laughs> right, yeah. You've seen Men in Black, That's right? Deep cover there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that poodle's deep cover. That, that can be an apprehension dog, boy. <laughs> a bite dog on that. Get uh, some of that. That's well done. <laughs> yeah, well done, deep cover FBI. Good job, guys. <laughs> do you think there was some uh because there was some rumors about that there was some blm that were in the area as well do you oh absolutely yeah, yeah there were yep. yeah yep. they just didn't get caught they fled yeah. before they got yeah, we, busted huh? um we weren't the primary agency on that we were an assisting mm-hmm. agency but we do believe that uh a couple of the rest that we had not on the Patriot front U-Haul truck, but through the 48 hour period that, um, we did arrest, um, some people that supported a different viewpoint. So yeah, yeah. there, there were several arrests during that, during that period. Mm. Yeah. And then, what were they charged with? You know, I was, we weren't the primary, I think there was a weapons violation. Okay. They, it was his, violations. it was enough that they were out the next day. Most oh, I'm sorry. I, was, I thought you were talking about the uh, the other groups. So the Patriot group was mostly charged with the conspiracy to commit a riot, and then the other some of the other ancillary arrests that we had were mostly weapons weapons, weapons violations. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What a mess! What a mess! <sighs> yeah, mm. yeah. And then you had the town hall dust up, which is famous now i've watched it on uh on youtube i guess is where i found it at yeah that was that was yeah. quite interesting you had showed the, remarkable restraint sir that was um <laughs> that was a rough one i certainly didn't anticipate uh 200 plus people there mm-hmm. but i do like that people are engaged mm-hmm. and i don't think that i said anything that was outrageous i had my my components of the town hall that we talked about and then towards the end i said i just want to make a statement about a few things one of them was that i am not a white nationalist like a national news agency made me out to be i didn't do not support the hate speech that was used at a an establishment in april but i also don't support a scantily clad individual performing in a sexually suggestive manner in front of children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's when I was called many things, Yeah, you know, homophobic, a white nationalist. And Mm -hmm. um, no, as, as your sheriff and as uh, part of the Idaho Sheriff Association, you know, safeguarding children and their mental health is Part of the laws that we make suggest- yeah. suggestions on. So, um, no, nope. I think that's a conversation we're going to have at our Idaho Sheriff Association meeting in Boise. I think that's a conversation that we're going to have in um, in the next legislature. So, conversations about yeah. decency and and what you can enforce as far as decency is concerned. That kind of conversation. Yeah, I think that. Um, you know, we, we have some laws that are on the books, but they just aren't very clear. But I think that we need to have a conversation on, uh, you know, if if performing a sexually suggestive manner 
is in the best interest of, of children. school age children, yeah. Yeah. You know, five, yeah. six, seven year olds. That's a great conversation. You know, when does when does your constitutional freedoms to be able to live the way you want start to breach the constitutional freedoms of a child and their pursuit of happiness and their safety and their liberty? You know, so that's that's an interesting conversation um, for sure. And it, you can go both ways on it, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't envy your position and having to defend that. That's for sure because. I think you're going to end up getting hatred on either side, mm-hmm. any way that you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could if as marginal or as marginal is not the right word, as as center of the line as you can get. It, the more center of the line that you get, the more hatred you're going to get from the extremes on both sides. Yeah, yeah which is kind of a sad statement in and of itself. Was that surrounding the drag show that was going to be performed, or was that the the stage performance that became so infamous. Yeah, that was the stage performance and the event being billed as a family friendly event. And, um, yeah, to, to have school age children with U S currency tipping these, these individuals like it's some kind of strip show. or Yeah. And, uh, you know, see, after that town hall meeting, I had some members of the media said, well, why did you have to say that about transvestites? And I said, what? W- w- w-, I said, what are you talking about? I said, I didn't say transvestites. I said adult, scantily clad adult. I wouldn't approve of a prostitute from Hollywood and Vine performing in that manner, nor would I approve of a prostitute from Hollywood and Vine yeah. reading library books in a library to children. I just, yeah. I, 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 I don't know where we put that social benchmark of. And, and <laughs> why right is it wrong? Why mm-hmm. is it that because you're transgender or, or whatever the case may be, or a cross dresser, why is it that you feel like you now have the privilege to violate every known social mm-hmm. standard? You know, it's like if I am a transgender, then none of the social rules apply to me. I can just do whatever yeah. I want. I don't. Yeah. That's the that's kind of the concept that I feel like they're trying to push as an agenda. You know, I should be able to read to your children. I should be able to dance on stage. You know, scantily clad in front of your children. But then that that argument is damaged when you have people that like release videos and they blur it out as if he was exposing his genitalia, and it, that didn't even happen. Right. You know, so then it's like you, when you try to, you know, defend the, that it was wrong, but then you have people lying about how bad it was. It's like the argument gets, gets destroyed. And so part of that whole social media. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Don't don't believe it yet. Yeah. That's right. Let's do some fact checking and (laughs) verification. But uh, so that was, that was just a mess, man. I don't, I don't envy you at all for having to, to work through that, but I commend you. But on how I, you work through I, but it. But I have to tell you, I have reached out to the North Idaho Pride Alliance, and we've had some recent meetings, and I'm asking them to help me understand as I go into Boise for my Idaho Sheriff Association, help me understand the focus on the children. And I don't understand the, the focus on the drag queen show, Mm-hmm. with children. Um, I think that's where you incite a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, where my communication loops are telling me is, you know, adults with drag shows, that doesn't incite the the emotion like the recent one in Boise yeah. where it was advertised as a, another drag queen show well, That's for adults children. doing an adult yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, so... So I'm I'm reaching out to the community say, hey, help me understand. Wow. And why not hold some forums and bring in some of the groups that are on the opposite side of the, the conversation and explain it to them on why the emphasis on children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why do the children have to be involved at all? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. so I'm asking for that. I'm I'm saying, hey, help me understand why the focus on How's that going? Because you're asking for their agenda. Yeah, it's it's it's, it it's uh it's ongoing. I mean, it's recent. Okay. I mean, 
obviously we had a very busy summer, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I, j- I met with them a couple of weeks ago. So mm-hmm. it's a, you know, and then, you know, getting everybody scheduled together, sure. there was four or five of them. And yeah. Mm-hmm of the council that I met with, but, um, I'm everybody's sheriff, you know, I, yeah, I, I'm everybody's yeah. sheriff. It doesn't matter. Well, it's, it's your job to protect their constitutional rights. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, um, I want to understand their viewpoint. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a brilliant approach. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. understanding is a, is a great way to, that was one of the intentions of this show to begin with was to have people come in and to discuss their, kind of points of view to see what they're where where they're coming from to see if we could find some kind of understanding as to you know why is it that we have this disconnect between the far left and the far right you know i mean what and how can people that are in the middle be able to navigate that and still be able to communicate and run society at the same time because obviously you can't run you can't run society on on an extreme you know there has to be like you said earlier a balance you know i mean that that's the hard part. Do you recall the May of 2020 when the George Floyd situation was set setting off across the country? Right. And then we had an event in Spokane and the Nike store and other retail stores were looted. Looted, yeah. And we had personnel that had went over there to assist the Spokane law enforcement officers the election was in the primary was also extended a little bit. So I had not known I had won the primary yet, but I did participate with the, the individuals that went down to protect their community Mm -hmm. on, on Sherman. Mm -hmm. And I was part of that contingency. And there was a reporter from Spokane who asked me, you are, you, you, at this time, you, I had won. I'd known I had won. said, uh, so you are the Republican candidate for sheriff. And you participated in this, in this event. What did you think about that? And I said, well, that was the safest place in America. Yeah, for sure. I said, um, he, you would have thought his head exploded. <laughs> <laughs> because how could you say that? I said, well, based on my experience with other situations that started off as peaceful events, such as sports celebrations in Mm -hmm. Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. where a sports celebration started off pretty benign, and then a couple of people threw a rock, and then you got contagious behavior. I said, I've been at homes where we've had many riots. I've been on streets where we've had full-blown riots. I was in the 92 riots. I said, I base my experience on all my past incidents. I know for a fact that the reason why we didn't have any looting like they did in Spokane the night before was because of there was people that were protecting their community. Yeah. And, um, but boy, the they don't want to hear that. And there's mm-hmm. there's some people here that don't like my position that I was that I was down there that I support it or that I was down there. Yeah. But I promise you, as pr- based on my experience of all the other previous incidents that I've been involved in, the reason why we didn't have any looting that they had the night before was be- because of people protecting. This community. Yeah. Were you down there as every night sheriff elect? No. Or private. No. No, He had just won the primary. I I had. Yeah. So I was down there before, and then uh, they, because they delayed the results and Mm -hmm. they gave people like ten more days of voting or so. So time uh, for the riots. No. (laughs) 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 Yeah, for COVID. So yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, no, it was. um, That's the only reason we didn't have the same event that occurred. In Spokane the night before. Yeah, because people were protecting Protecting this community, yeah. 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 That was brilliant. We got some amazing pictures from down there, and there was some – it was just really great to see. I mean, of course, you have your – you have your your fanatics. You have your weirdos that go down there. And now I've also you, you said that, but I, I said it was the safest place in America. I also said it was most likely place to have an accidental discharge. That's <laughs> okay, now sure. I, yeah. I'm There's being that. fair here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like really just kind of watch everybody's yes. muzzle flash. You know, it's like okay, what? Yeah. I'm thinking flip flops and. Uh, 
Some of the, the attire down there, probably not the best attire yeah. to use. Yeah. I saw one guy down there. He had a suit on with the with the with the shoulder holster, double pistol shoulder yeah. holster I, thing. I, yeah, I saw that guy too. Yeah, I mean, that, I, th- I thought it was well done actually. Yeah, I mean, with the whole have tuxedo. A, have fun. Why not? You know, yeah. why not? Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. And then it was kind of funny, is that you know when we're we're down there, and of course I have the cop mentality and. You see some people with a uh, an old fashioned bow and arrow, you know, <laughs> and, and you you start walking by, mm, convicted felon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. Have yeah. Can't have a firearm. Can't have a firearm. Oh, can't have a firearm. Crossbow. <laughs> yeah, he's got a crossbow. Can't have a firearm. Can't have a firearm. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Slingshot. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> So let, oh, let's wow. switch gears for a second, talk about some specifics, and then we'll let you go because we know you have another uh, event to get to here really soon. Um, crime rates in Kootenai County, what, what are they looking like? Well, unfortunately, with the growth that mm-hmm. we're experiencing mm-hmm. and the projected growth, um, right now, my jail, I should be at about 380 in the Kootenai County Jail. I'm about 475. Wow. So... Crime is increasing. Many of our high-profile events, unfortunately, and I don't mean to be a white nationalist <laughs> as I've been pegged, but we have a, a lot of influence from Washington on a lot of our high-profile events. Um, hmm. The barricaded suspect where the woman was shot at, the dog was set on fire, the house was set on fire, oh. and he was shooting at deputies in Hayden. That that gentleman had a 31-page rap sheet. Good gravy. Wow. From the state of Washington. And uh, we do see an increase in all of our activity, whether it's um, pe- petty theft, grand theft, traffic collisions, where we're really seeing an increase is, is in our mentally ill calls for service. Mm-hmm. Really high, mm-hmm. and uh, I but, I would imagine you see the same thing in the need of your mm-hmm. constituents that sure. uh, a lot of mental health needs yeah. out there. Mental health is a is a major issue. I mean, just uh, almost unspeakable how much of a need there is for mental yeah. health, and there is a severe lack of mental health professionals. Mm-hmm. We've had Phil Altmeyer from Union Gospel Mission on here. Mm-hmm. He, he schooled us <laughs> about yeah. uh, mental health and homelessness. Uh, How a lot of the homelessness know. is related to mental health. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think the majority of it is. And sub- yeah. substance abuse, um, mm-hmm. very high. Our fentanyl deaths are two and a half times what they were in 2020. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Is there gang involvement in this situation we're talking about right now? You know... Do we have some gang activity? Yeah. Do we have crews that are organized and working criminal enterprises um, from a street gang standpoint? No. Okay. No. Um, We don't have the street crime that, you know, Spokane and some of the other places do. Um, I'm a little bit concerned with a little bit of a influence that we're starting to see with our 1% motorcycle gangs. Mm. Um, yeah, so we're starting to see there's some, there's some drug involvement that comes along mm-hmm. with that drug, as well. Human trafficking mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And of course, you know, motorcycle parts and, yeah. mm-hmm. um, motorcycle thefts, but, um, yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of that activity that we didn't see, but unfortunately crime has caught up with the, with the growth here and I am have about 20% inmates that I, that I should have. And every category has increased about 20%. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's tough. It's here. And even in our, you know, the North end, even Athol, Mm -hmm. you know, they built super one for a reason. This is one of the busiest stores in the state of Idaho. It's crazy. Really? Two years ago, it was number one for alcohol sales. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. It was, uh, we like to drink up here. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. You have yeah, to. They, they took out their video section so they could put more alcohol in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. People are like, all these people are moving in from California. Let's just drink. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what it boils down to. <laughs> so, yeah, growth. Uh, we made it out. It, it's a real concern. Gro- growth yeah. uh, because growth with growth comes, comes crime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. just a mathematical. Are you equation. keeping it up with it with, in, in terms of personnel in the department? You know, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I, we got some support from our commissioners. Um, yeah. There was some budget issues, right? Yeah. That, that yeah. you had to get through. Yeah. We, uh, we're, we're getting, we got some support from our commissioners. Good. Yeah. Commissioner Duncan and commissioner Brooks. Uh, so we're at least keeping up with the same yeah. rate of we're growth. We're moving in the right growing. direction. Okay. Yeah. We're, I think we're you're going to have some great support coming into the county commissioners after the elections as well. Yeah, there's a, that one commission named Matari. Matari, who, we yeah. interviewed him. Yeah, he's a great yeah. guy. When I, uh, he, he was my campaign manager. So, yeah. you know, the people who don't know that, I said, well, do you like the job I'm doing? Oh, you like the job I'm doing? Okay, well, good. That's Bruce Matari. Do you like <laughs> the job I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know this <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> you do have your own scapegoats, right? Yeah, that's right. That's that's right. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm looking forward to to working with the new board. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm very happy where Hayden is going also. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of people in the city of Hayden that still look at Hayden as a 3,500-person town. No. And it's not. Nice. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not. It's gone from a rural town to an urban town yeah. with urban problems. So Yeah, yeah it's kind of like here. People think of mm-hmm. Athol and they think, oh, 640 people or whatever, you know. But, <laughs> man, greater Athol, like I would consider the surrounding area, yeah. Oh my goodness! There's just the so last, many last demographic people up here. Was thirty thousand, and I suspect it's probably forty thousand within fifteen miles. Right, and then when you consider during the peak months where fair gets open yeah. yep. and Sil- Silverwood's open, Silverwood. you have tens of thousands of visitors. Oh yeah, a day. Yeah. That that <laughs> brings up an interesting quote that you made. You made a quote um, in 2021 on Independence Day where you said. Don't come to Kootenai County on vacation and leave on probation. Boy. <laughs> what a statement. You like to bring up another <laughs> event where the media over in Spokane called me a, a white nationalist again. Yeah, but yeah. I, I was just, uh, but then I provided facts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I provided yeah. facts where I don't have them with me, but I think it was close to 50% of our arrestees from the year before were from the state of Washington. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And boy, when I said that, you know, they don't come to Kootenai <laughs> County on vacation yeah. to leave on probation. <laughs> it's a brilliant statement. <laughs> well, when, you know, mentioning Super One, when Super One first went in, it used to, it was really made me question what's going on here? Half of the license plates were Washington. Mm-hmm. It was like, why are they coming here to shop? Oh, because they can't shop in Spokane because it was all shut down. Right. Shut down. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. I mean, and, it, that was a so you took office in when did you take office January 1st 2021 2021 so you were you were there during covid yes yep we uh, came out almost immediately yeah on the um, you know protecting your fourth amendment right yeah 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 you know, all persons shall be secure in their persons and homes and Part of that is this was this mandate from the Panhandle Health District at the time about uh, restrictions and wearing a mask and what have you. And uh, I take very serious that uh, upholding the Fourth Amendment right, just like I do the Second Amendment right. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, without any due probable cause, we're not going to stop you and and seize you or issue you a citation on some of these mandates that. Yeah, um, the legislature didn't make a law about, mm-hmm. and the commissioners didn't make a law about this appointed health board. Mm-hmm. Kind of just started passing down mandates because yeah. the governor said so. Right. So, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. So we came out immediately and said, "Hey, um, we're not going to enforce that, nor are we going to use that as probable cause to stop you." Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for that, yes. by the way. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah, it, that was such a 
a, a ridiculous notion. And what's funny is, is like when, when you guys came out and, and, and stated that, you know, we're not enforcing these, we're not going to use probable cause. We're not going to use it for probable cause, man. The outcry from Washington state and those other places were like, Oh, well, that's good. All you North Idahoans can die then from COVID, you know? And it's like, well, no, we didn't really lock down a whole lot. We didn't panic a whole lot. Not a lot of people up here really panicked to get the uh, vaccine. We're still here. Yeah, you know, we <laughs> we did okay. The morgue's not full. <laughs> <laughs> and quite honestly, I didn't see in the data that I looked at that the infection rates were any lower on municipalities that had or had not made these mandates mm-hmm. part yeah. of their yeah. their law. I didn't Yeah. Yeah. And in some cases they were higher where right. they had a higher vaccination rate and more strict social distancing and mask wearing, they were higher. So, and you didn't get that data off the internet, did you? Oh, well, Facebook. I, I did, but then I had to verify it. Yeah, you got off of Facebook. Yeah. Well, you know, this, another interesting fact during that period of time, we had some cycles of COVID in our jail. Hmm. We did at, when I first came into office, there was a policy that staff had to wear a mask. But what we saw was the staff had higher infection rates than the inmates. We left the inmates at optional, that you could wear a mask if you wanted to. Here's where the masks are. It's, it's an option. And they hmm. did not receive the same cycles of infection that that's staff interesting yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah because yeah. you know it's an enclosed environment they're there for the, the staff is there you know 12 hours a day 13 hours a day for three or four days a week and um that was an interesting yeah. phenomenon that, that is occurred. interesting yeah huh. it's gonna be interesting to find out how many years before the federal government says we were wrong oh oh wait federal government well that just wrong. you know that just came out right the 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 um was it the senate the senate just passed a bill to end the, the COVID, um, the emergency, the emergency uh, crisis man, uh, bill God. or whatever. <laughs> but then Thank Biden God. came out immediately and said that when it comes to my desk, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to oh, veto geez. it. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the world's finally caught up to uh, North Idaho. Now, and on the flip side of that, if somebody wants to wear a mask, yeah, wear, a wear a mask. mask. I, I, have, yeah. I have no issues. You know, if you nice. want to wear a mask, absolutely wear yeah. a mask. Um, yeah. Just let people be people. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You want to go get a vaccine? Go get a vaccine. Okay. Yeah, if it makes you feel better, go get yeah. one. Absolutely. I'm not anti vaccine. I'm not yeah. pro vaccine. I think it yeah. should be your a choice between you and your doctor. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think it should mm-hmm. be it's available to you. Right. You're an American. You're an adult. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And then deal with the consequences. Yeah, you know, that's kind of what it boils down to, right? Personal responsibility. Whatever happened to that, Sheriff? Mm. Whatever happened to the notion of personal responsibility? It's alive and well in Kootenai County. (laughs) (laughs) And we're going to make sure it keeps alive and well in Kootenai County. Amen to that. Amen to that. Uh, So another thing that people are probably really concerned about is with all of the rhetoric coming out of Washington about gun control, um, you know, you hear people like uh, old Beto, Beto, (laughs) surfer man Beto. Yeah, we're coming for you. Yeah, we're coming for your guns, right? Um, you've, you've stated that you won't enforce any kind of Kootenai or any kind of confiscations that may, may come around in Kootenai County. Is that, is that true? That is 100% true. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, state legislature really helped out local officials. Um, a few years ago, they, they passed a, a law here in Idaho that elected officials and, and alike don't have to enforce those federal gun laws and what have you. So, amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah, to that. And, and yeah. then, of course, I, I did say that because that was when I think the bill was first getting introduced into the Senate. Yeah. And there was a lot of reservation from a lot of people that I attended that uh, on that event on that night. And so I did get up on stage, and I did make myself perfectly clear where I stand on this, and that uh, there will be no gun confiscation whatsoever here in Kootenai County. 
Yeah. What about like uh, like if they pass laws about magazine capacities and things of that nature? Will we be enforcing any of that? Shall not be infringed. All right. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. No, Love that. Uh, that's what that Second Amendment means. So. Yeah. I wonder how that works out. Like, if you get a federal mandate that states that you can't have magazines of more than five, like, how would like black sheep be able to sell magazines at that point? Would they be able to source them from somewhere? I mean, like, there'd have to be a way that they could do it. If it wasn't being enforced here in Idaho, I mean, you'd think they'd be able to sell well, magazines. Can, can we get some gun manufacturers uh, to relocate here to Idaho? Oh, that yeah. would be great. There you go. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Some, yeah. Uh, accessory <laughs> manufacturers yeah. to We had to a, a gentleman here that, that mm-hmm. was in the uh, uh, business of manufacturing bullets. You know, not uh, not the cartridge or anything, just just the uh, just the lead, the bullets. And uh, he went to his bank one day, and they decided not to help him oh. with his business anymore. Dang! And this was Thanks. years ago. Yeah, Can you, you imagine know? that? Yeah. No, just uh, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Watch your ESG yeah. ESG score. Make sure mm. your ESG score doesn't go down. <laughs> yes. Right. If you're gonna get uh, conspiratorial, yeah, yeah, they're gonna come at it from. Every direction they can. Yeah. I I think that that's great comfort of being up here and knowing that, you know, we're not going to have to worry about federal gun laws that come around because yeah. we have a sheriff that's not going to come after our guns. That's that's amazing. I really appreciate that. Shall not be infringed. Yeah. It brings up other questions, though, too. Like, you know, what if they get really dogmatic about it and they send federal f- federal agents up here to start confiscating guns? What do we do then? I mean, how do... How do we defend ourselves against something like that? Well, I got to tell you, the sheriff up in Bonner, mm-hmm. um, he had a situation like that, and I think he handled it pretty well. And the way that I was told the facts was that uh, there was a federal protective police agency that went to this veteran's home, and this was during a previous presidential administration who put in a policy that if um, you are a veteran and if you have a conservator, then you can't own handguns. And so they went to his home and say, hey, you Mm. have a conservator and you can't have any firearms. And you have these these firearms that are registered to you. What is a conservator? Conservator is somebody who takes care of Financial could be financial affairs, could be uh, okay. So this personal care, you know, gotcha. type of situation. So this gentleman said, "Hey, I have a conservator because I don't like to do my own taxes. So I gave power of attorney. Mm-hmm. I gave conservator because I don't want to have to deal with that stuff. But I'm not threatening to kill myself. I'm yeah. not threatening to kill anybody else with, these, mm-hmm. with these firearms. Uh, I use them for my own protection." And the sheriff up in Bonner arrived on scene and. Uh, Said this isn't going to happen here today. Overrode the federals. Uh, he goes, yep. well, you know what? We're going to have a conversation about this, but it's not going to be out here right now, and there's not going to be any gun confiscation going on right here. So, man, thank but God. I think what's it's going to go through legislation. You know, I think that uh, that's where we need to focus on is legislation. Um, yeah, we well, saw some some senators that tried to incentivize the states to enact some of these red flag laws. Yeah. So, with federal money, right? Yeah. Exactly. Where did that come from? The conservator thing. I mean that. I mean that's some obscure law that somebody put in place to, you know, ultimately that's another step that was a to president before, um, before President Trump. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, yeah, he he put in those uh, conditions and policies of uh, mm. because you don't want you don't want senile old men owning guns. Right, right. You know, that's kind of what it boils down to. But that was, to. that's a, sounds like a blanket law that's going to incorporate everybody, yeah. including this gentleman that's like, hey, well, the assumption, like my taxes. the assumption was because they have a conservator, they are incapable of right. owning yeah. firearms. Right, and that's yeah. the assumption part. The assumption, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, you're doing okay, to, Greg. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd need me a conservator. Do you need a conservator? <laughs> it's called my wife. Yeah. Let's, let, <laughs> let's not have sentencing enhancements for criminals who use guns and the commission of a crime because of course you know yeah that would be discriminating we don't want to we don't we don't want to yeah, we don't want to fringe upon that. their oh, happiness my. We don't, <laughs> yeah we don't want to do that right yeah but let's make I sure do that support we, now i gotta go on the record i do support that i do support that if you use a firearm in the commission of a crime you should have a sentencing enhancement 
Yeah, absolutely. Harsher sentencing for that. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, yep. responsibility. Um, that's that whole personal responsibility piece again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, you you stated that random policing equals random results. What is what does that mean? That's correct. So we like more results based policing. We like to identify a particular problem and then approach that problem. Um, for instance, and this is a hypothetical. This is not a uh, this is not a real situation. And always, I suggest that people listen to the deputy or the officer on scene. Mm-hmm. But it's a hypothetical. If there's a stop sign on a country road, and you see visibility with for hundreds of feet on both sides, and there's been no reported traffic collisions, pedestrian vehicle deaths, injuries at this intersection. And if that vehicle that is driving on that country road with clear visibility doesn't completely stop for that versus a stop sign in a busy part of the city of Hayden near a school where we've had traffic collisions and where we've had vehicle versus pedestrian incidents. Would I want to concentrate those resources and that enforcement on the area where the problem is? Yes. Yeah. And would I put on the low, low end of the resource needs for that other of stop sign example that I gave you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause really we want to focus on the problem. Yeah. If I had a daytime burglary problem in uh, Cataldo, so would I need to pull resources to address this daytime burglary problem in Cataldo? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would. So those are the types of uh, focuses and, and crime strategies that we want to, to employ. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're yeah. you're not just randomly driving around town trying to figure out who you can pull over. You know, you 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 have hot spots. You know, you have to deal with. Let's Correct. focus our resources on those things instead of, you know, harassing the guy that just ran the stoplight in the country and, where nobody else is. And around. you can see 500 feet in yeah, yeah, both mm-hmm. directions. Yeah, yeah no, that makes total sense. So, to he's me. still breaking the law. It, it, but it's, technically, it's yes. Not, it's, technically, it's, yes. It's not, but you know what? They haven't had any reported traffic yeah. collisions at that intersection for 10 years, right. and. Yeah, to have a cop sitting there. To, to that's a very ticket somebody. That's a very common sense approach to right. to yeah. law enforcement. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if that fits in with the with their society today. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's way too much common sense there's built into that. that common sense is no in. longer common. Yeah. Is that the same? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so um, the, how can how can citizens in our community? Um, best support the sheriff's office? You know, when you see a deputy out there or a police officer, you know, uh, go up there and say thank you. You mm-hmm. know, we, we appreciate that. We, we really do appreciate that. We do like also for regular residents to get involved, whether it's their a town council or city council, board of commissioners. I think what we're seeing across this country is people that – thought that their elected leaders were going to make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. And we see some of our school boards that are making some crazy decisions Mm -hmm. on curriculum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thankfully, Lakeland Joint School District is not not one of those. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think it's important that uh, get engaged, get involved. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. be involved. Yeah. Yeah. For at least at least pay attention to yeah. what's going on for sure. Yeah. The plug for H forty six here, Chris. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, we do have a group here at our church called H forty six, and they uh, go to all the different town hall meetings. You won't even know they're there, um, but what they do is they come and they record the meetings and they report on anything that addresses any kind of any kind of moral Whoa. issue. So if there's something that comes up, like the, they were at the one where they were talking about the statue that was going to be down in Coeur d'Alene or whatever, mm-hmm. and there was a big hoorah, uh, hoorah over that, you know. 
Um, and uh, so, yeah, you know, if you're at our church and you're listening and you want to be a part of that, you can put it on your connection card, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do we get a connection card plug <laughs> in 3P? What's in that all about? I don't yeah. know. Thank you. Though. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, that's a great example of being yeah. involved. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. Being engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. Be engaged. Yeah. So big question. Are you looking at re-election? You know what? That's something that uh, I'm having a conversation on with uh, the wife as we speak. Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah probably uh, Yeah, going to be having a have a deeper conversation and make that decision in the in the mm-hmm. future. So we're not going to be able to pry a decision out of you on the you heard it here first on yeah, probably on 3P. Not. <laughs> <laughs> we we had to try, right? You yes. realize we had to try. A plus. Yeah. You get an okay. A plus for trying. All right. Well, you get an A for effort. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything in particular that you want to talk uh, that you want to mention to the public in general that if you had the ear of the public and you could say, you know, one or two things, what what would you what would you say? Well, you have to put me on the spot here a little bit, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, kind of dovetail on what we talked about, get involved, be engaged, know what your elected leaders are doing, talking about, saying in these public meetings. Mm-hmm. I think it's very, very important. And if uh, if you have children, I think that, Social media is something that uh, is a very destructive force um, and that uh, it should be monitored. Yeah. Yeah, it should be monitored. Um, you know, I remember social media when I had my my older sons was um, not real big, but we said, hey, you can't have, you can't play games um, during the week. And on the weekends, you can only play for an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon if your chores are done. And I, I think that the social media is a big, big influencer yeah, on is. children today. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm concerned about where that is leading us in the future. Yeah. It is a dangerous, dangerous mm-hmm. thing to give kids unlimited, unfettered access to people that have an agenda. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%, 100%. Yeah, monitor the community and monitor what your your children and grandchildren are doing on social media. Yeah, there's a future. Yeah. There's a future. Make Absolutely. Make sure that we're bringing them up right. Yeah. Greg, do you have any final words? Yeah, who's doing your job while you're out goofing off with us? Oh boy, I have some very, very capable um, under an under sheriff and several captains and great yeah. lieutenants mm-hmm. and great sergeants and mm-hmm. awesome deputies. Like Are those Doug people Goodman. that yeah. you got to put in place, or were they there and it just happened to be that they follow your? You know what? Uh, kind thoughts. of a mix. Okay. Yeah, kind of a mix there. All right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you were putting together. A, a, not to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt your final thoughts, Greg. But you had put together a council, clergy council, yep. and a citizen citizen advisory council. That's what, correct. What's, what's that looking like right now? You know, we we depend. I depend on that for a communication loop mm-hmm. to the community, and uh, we that we had the last meeting. I think it was about three months ago, but uh, we're getting ready to start those up again. Um, but I regularly call on many of those people, yeah, and also the citizen advisory council also. So I have a citizen advisory council and I have a clergy council, and those are all community um, communication loops that I like to keep mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. with residents of Cooney County. Cool. I used to do the chaplaincy there in uh, Cooney County, the sheriff's department when Ben was Ben Wolfinger was still there, and it was going strong. And it kind of fell apart there for a little bit. Is it is it still? It, it's going? Uh, it's starting to reinvent itself. So yeah. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, we're we're bringing back bringing it back. So the chaplaincy. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I've got some great friends that do that chaplaincy. Kurt uh, being one of them. Kurt Crawl, good yep. friend of mine. Love that guy. Um. Yeah, that's good to hear. Ken, do you have any final words? Well, I just thought I would uh, read Proverbs twenty one fifteen for our listeners. Mm-hmm. When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. And so I would just uh, remind all of our listeners, 
if you're a praying person, pray for the sheriff and his department for the safety yes. of yeah. the officers and that true justice would be done in our county, in our state, and in our nation. We need it very badly. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Amen. you have our prayers, sir. Thank Amen. you very much. Always. Appreciate that. Well, Sheriff, man, we really appreciate you being here with us today. What a blessing it was to be able to sit down and talk with yeah, you and get great. familiar with you and, and, and meet you face-to-face. And thank you for your accessibility um, because that's it's not common. Um, and so we appreciate your accessibility to the people um, that you represent. And um, we just pray the best for you and uh, pray for your safety and all the deputies that are working under you and all the guys that are working under you, man. It's just an amazing mm-hmm. job you guys are doing in Kootenai County. Yeah. And what's really amazing is is that a lot of those guys could cut bait and go to Spokane and make a lot more money, um, but they choose to take on the battle here in Kootenai County. And, um, man, yeah, what not only a sacrifice, but just what a, what dedication yeah. they have to the people here in this community. And I want them to know um, on behalf of Athel Baptist Church that we thank them for their service and what they're doing and uh, all you guys. And we support you 100%. Well, thank you, and I can't agree with you more. We have some very, very dedicated and talented, not only sworn and professional staff on the sheriff's office, so we appreciate your support. Amen, amen, amen. You think uh, we can close with... (laughs) The families of the Idaho... (laughs) Yeah. The uh, Moscow event... You think we can mm-hmm. close with um, in their memory? Yeah, yeah. Leave it up to. Them. Yeah, because yeah, you know three of those families are from Kootenai County. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's a um, not only are the residents of Kootenai County mourning, but the state of Idaho and the nation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I hope that there's swift justice for the person or persons involved in in that event greg can you pray for us i can let's do that father so often we get to come to you and and praise you and thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and other times father we have to come to you with uh, hurt in our heart Mm. tears in our eyes And uh, just ask for your grace to be upon each one of us that is affected by this situation uh, down in Moscow. And uh, just asking for your grace and that your peace would be upon the families of those uh, young people that that were murdered and uh, that you would just continue to uh, help the police and sheriff and all the law enforcement people that will be involved with that, Father, to do the best that they can and to bring this yeah. to uh, swift justice. Uh, Father, our hearts hurt uh, in a situation like this, but Lord, you can remedy all of that. You can bring us back into a right relationship with you and with the families. And so, Father, as we... As we depart here today, help this to be on our hearts and on our minds until this situation is remedied. Thank you, Father, for your love and your grace. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So in dedication and memory of those that, uh, that lost their lives down there and for the swift justice that should follow, um, that about does it for us today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we really appreciate you being here, Sheriff. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as always, uh, thank you for joining us. If you have any ideas for any episodes that you'd like for us to investigate or any guests that you'd like to hear us interview, please send us an email at 3p at athelbaptistchurch.org. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. You can find us on Apple iTunes and on Google Play. You can also find us on our website at athelbaptistchurch.org. 
and our app at Athel Baptist Church. Um, thank you for uh, Gavin doing our sound for us. And thank you, Ken and Greg, for being here. Thank you, Sheriff, again, for being here with us. And thanks to Athel Baptist Church and its members for their generous support of this ministry. Um, and again, thank you for listening. And until next time, remember the Great Commission. Go into all the world, preach the lost with the gospel, and build disciples who can do the same. And with that, we are out. Bye.